Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I wanted to do another recommendations video, which I have done this format before. Uh, basically today I wanted to do, if you like this, you might like that kind of a recommendations format. Um, talking about specific books and movies I think you would like if you like the book. So obviously this works in both directions, though some movies are probably going to be more uh, well known than others uh, and vice versa so hopefully you will find something that sounds uh, interesting to you maybe you haven't read either book or the movie but you like the sound of them uh, so hopefully this will this will be interesting um, and let's get on with my first pairing so first up the sort of the book that uh, had me thinking about the um, the overlap between movies and books is um, Marie by Madeleine Bordeaux which is a book about uh, a young woman who is married. She has just started a, a, an affair with a younger man. She deals with various different things like her relationship with her sister, her relationship towards men in, in general, uh, her husband, her lover, other men who come into her life. Um, but it's mostly about her inner life and her reactions to things around her and her expectations on life. The movie that it reminded me of is Amelie from 2001. It is a French movie that uh, follows uh, Amelie Poulain who works as a waitress and it follows her throughout her life. She's sort of an odd uh, character. But it follows her meeting a man and uh, becoming involved in his life. The thing that sort of binds them together is the way narration, the, the narration is done. So in the novel it seems as if the uh, protagonist Marie is aware of the fact that she has an audience. She sometimes seemed to be performing her uh, character, uh, her persona, uh, and that is the same with Amélie. Uh, she is sometimes speaking directly towards the camera, and it is this way of the narration and playing with the awareness of the protagonist having an audience, uh, and as well as having sort of an alternative explanation of the fact that this conversation, the narration is actually a dialogue with the um, within uh, the character's mind is what binds the two together and also the fact that both uh, main characters have a very rich inner life and have almost entire conversations without anyone else being involved. Uh, next up we have a strange one that I've just recently read and it's The Doll's Alphabet by Camille Gordova which is a short story collection. All of the stories have various different aspects that are magical realism but the most prominent uh, thing about them is that they are quite bizarre, weird uh, fiction is how I would describe them. Uh, and the thing that the sh collection as a whole and specific stories reminded me of is Wes Anderson uh, movies and in particular the Royal Tenenbaums. So one of the things that Wes Anderson does there is the tendency to uh, have a very organized set and uh, the design of the movies have a lot of specific objects that are both uh, repetitive so they come up in various different forms and also the objects themselves are signifiers often of the characters. They are part of the character's persona as a whole. And that is definitely something I could see in uh, the short stories in the Doll's Alphabet. Uh, like for example, I think uh, Agata in Agata's Machine has oversized um, men's shoes that she wears and she wears uh, flowery old school uh, dresses. These things are sort of um, they sort of become the the outlines of the character and that can be said for Wes Anderson's movies as well. Uh, for example, the character Margot in The Royal Tannenbaums has her very specific fur coat and she has her cigarettes always and she has her hair in a bob uh, kind of uh, hairstyle that she keeps wearing even as she grows older. Even 20 years later she basically has the same appearance. Uh, so the way that the objects, uh, specific items, uh, are signifiers of a character and how much Im um, importance they are given in both the short story collection and was Anderson is one of the um, similarities between them. Another last thing that I think the two 
um, share is the uh, play with the limits of genius versus madness. Gradova pu pushes the boundaries of madness and uh, where to draw the line um, and I think that is also a very important theme in the Royal Tannenbaums in particular and actually one of the things I really like about uh, his movies. Uh, next up we have a um, quite well-known movie uh, and the book was also quite popular a while back and it is The End of Mr. Y by Scarlett Thomas. It is a literary mystery focusing on a, a girl who is a PhD student and she stumbles upon a recipe that allows you to enter into someone else's mind or subconscious. And the movie that uh, this reminded me of is Inception. It came out in 2010 and it is a movie all about uh, entering into someone else's mind and in particular uh, planting ideas into someone else's mind. Basically the the, con the the thing that they are trying to get at is trying to control a person through their mind. Um, this is actually something that comes up in The End of Mr. Y, the fact that the protagonist can actually uh, plant ideas into someone else's mind, but is it, it isn't something that everyone can do. But the bad guys in the novel can do that and want to use the mind uh, the entering of other people's minds exactly for the purpose of the inception idea. So I think they sort of d deal with a similar core uh, story, so I think if you like the one you might like the other. Next up we have um, a non-fiction book and it is Names for the Sea by Sarah Moss, which is a memoir about Sarah Moss moving to Iceland for a year with her family. Uh, so she talks about her experience adapting to this country and some of the uh, good things and not so nice things about this country uh, living in it as a an outsider. The movie that it reminded me of is Journey to Greenland which came out to 2016 and it is a um, French movie that sort of the way that it's done is almost uh, documentary-like, but it isn't a documentary. But it follows uh, two friends who are in their 30s and they decide, uh, because they're sort of stuck in their lives, they de decide to move to Greenland out of the blue. And it's about their adapting to this new place. Both deal with being in a quite isolated place with uh, limited possibilities in getting out of that place and they both deal with language barriers, culture clashes, uh, some of the challenges in adapting to a new home and a new uh, situation um, as well as some of the joy in getting to know a new uh, a new country, a new uh, environment, and new people as well. If you like sort of the, the general structure and, and idea uh, that the memoir explores, then I think you will probably enjoy the movie as well. Lastly, we have The Summer Book by Tove Jansson, which is a story of about a young girl uh, with her grandmother and her father living on a small island over the summer and it's just about their every day on this island, um, about the nature around them, the weather, uh, they're exploring the island. So it's a very quiet story focusing on a particular summer. The movie that it reminded me of is Ernest and Celestine, which is a movie that came out 2012. And it is a French movie, again, an animated movie, uh, that follows a beer and a mouse becoming friends. And both, uh, both of their respective societies are against their friendship. The beers and the mice's mice? The bears and the mice are not supposed to commingle. Both respective societies are against their relationship, but they're really good friends anyway. They decide not to care about the restrictions put on them. So the thing that, that binds the two together, the movie and the book, is the both the summer book and Ernest and Celestine is about a relationship between an adult and a child and a friendship uh, especially, how um, both of them really become a good partnership. While they are quite different in a lot of ways, they are also sort of uh, able to relate to one another. In the movie, both the uh, beer of the story, uh, Ernest and Celestine the mice, mouse, um, are sort of outcasts in in their individual societies. And so they sort of bind together through that, uh, through being different. And that can be said also for the summer book in that the 
age uh, of both, while they are on different sides of the spectrum, the age tr determines the things that they are able to do. They sort of dependent on someone else for some things. They connect through that as well. Both the pairings uh, have the adults as being slightly grumpy and the children as being slightly pushy, uh, which makes for a perfect combination uh, of uh, personalities and that is the thing I really like about both of the the Summer Book and Ernest and Celestine, as well as both pairings committing crimes together. So the, in the Summer Book it's a very minor thing, but in the uh, movie it's, it's also basically minor, but the, the fact that both pairings are quite, kind of mis mis mischievous uh, is one of the fun things about each. So I think if you like sort of the, the relationship between um, the grandmother and the child in the Summer Book, then I think you definitely need to check out Ernest and Celestine is a fantastic movie. It's really beautifully done as well. Those were all of the recommendations I wanted to give you today. Hopefully you will find some of these interesting. If you've read or seen any of these, um, I would love hear, to hear your thoughts about them. Uh, or if you have any other recommendations based on these pairings, uh, I would love to hear that as well. I hope you're having a really good day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.